I know that I've done so much and I've done so many things that I'm not proud of. But yet Hashem has seen it in his mercy to forgive me and not only to forgive me, but draw me near into his people and make me part of his people. Hello and welcome to Life of Virtue. Today's video will be talking about the Torah portion. Hayao? Uh, yes, actually, I wanted to share with everybody something that I got this morning uh, from the Torah portion after davening. And it, I thought it was super interesting. And it is found in Vaikra 1, uh, verses 14 through 17. And then it has to do with the offering of the bird. And it's interesting because the bird has always been the offering of the poor man. Usually, like, if you have more money, then you would give an ox or something like that. And if you have, you know, uh, maybe a little bit less money, you might give a goat or something like that. I, I don't know exactly what the, the levels of, of financials are necessarily on that. But I do know that it is if you can't afford any of it, then you give a bird. All right. And so as I was reading, well, the way that I understood it before was that the bird was received by, by the Kohen. Uh, the feathers would come off, and then they would go ahead and do all the, the rest of the things and then burn it in the, uh, in the fire. But well, kind of find out that actually the bird is put in the fire with the feathers, even though it breeds, you know, when, when the feathers get burned, it breeds a, a really bad aroma. It's really bad. Uh, have you ever heard, have you ever smelled like hair being burned or anything? Not recently. Not recently. <laughs> but you know, you do know that it, oh, no. it stinks. It's never, really bad. It never crossed my mind. It never crossed your mind. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, it's really bad. Uh, so I was kind of confused. I went into the commentary because of the way that is worded. I went into the commentary and Rashi says that actually uh, they put the whole bird in the fire with the feathers. And then after they is being cooked, I don't know how long it's been cooked, you know, after that, I have no idea. But then the feathers come off, mm -hmm. uh, among other things that happen. And I was very curious, so I continue to read. And I want to share what it says here. This is the art scroll Chumash, and it says, with its feathers. Even though there is hardly a more repulsive smell than that of a burning feathers, the feathers are not removed from the bird before it is burned up upon the altar. Why are the feathers left? Because bird offerings are commonly brought only by poor people who cannot afford more than a bird. And if the feathers were removed, the remainder of the bird would be so tiny and insignificant as to embarrass the pauper who offered it. Better to endure the smell and let the altar be adorned by the poor man's offering. And that was Rashi. Wow, that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful because it shows us that God is concerned even with the... That's amazing how a poor man's view is in front of other people. And uh, it shows also his, his kindness, the way yes. that he feels towards us. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful how he holds to a certain esteem, um, even that which is lowly. So, you know, self-esteem matters to Hashem. Self-esteem <laughs> does matter to Hashem. As a matter of fact, uh, later it talks about the uh, satisfying aroma. And it says, it is remarkable that the huge animal offered and the tiny bird offering are described identical as a satisfying aroma. This is an illustration of the principle noted above that it matters not to God whether one brings much or little so long as one's heart is directed sincere to heaven. Baruch Hashem. I think that's beautiful because yeah. us as humans, if we were to smell the, the feathers and everything, we wouldn't consider it a pleasing aroma. Right. But to Hashem, who sees beyond the physical? To him, it is a a, a, a beautiful, um, satisfying aroma, mm -hmm. and he looks at it the same way for the big ox or the expensive, let's mm -hmm. say, than for the lowly small bird. You know what comes to mind when you say this is that story of when they're they're picking the brothers, and um, it says like Hashem looks at. He doesn't look at the outer appearance, but the inner appearance of the man. The oh, David. David. That's right. That's a, that's a very good point. When Samuel went to Jesse right. to check out the brothers. Um, Correct. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, he looked at all the brothers and he was like, no, we, we, we have another one. Yeah. And yeah. then sure enough, a David? 
you know, and uh, whatever they thought of David at that time, you know, he God saw beyond that. He sees beyond the flesh. He sees the heart and yeah. the intentions and yeah. all these different things. I think they were very beautiful. Yeah, it just completely like paralleled to me for some reason. Yeah, another thing that, and it's not necessarily directed, correlated to this, but mm -hmm. it brought this idea um, when I read this portion, and it had to do with how we view ourselves mm. versus the way that Hashem views us. And also the way that we view Hashem and then the way that Hashem actually is. So, for example, there are, I've spoken to many people and I saw like a spectrum of differences into the way that they view all these different things. Mm. And I'm going to speak necessarily first with the way that they were viewing themselves. And they express themselves in a way that they um, feel like they sinned so much or that they probably don't have a way of, of being close to Hashem anymore because they've done so much in their lives that that keeps them away from Hashem. And, you know, it made me think because I, I remember myself, I'm like, I know that I've done so much and I've done so many things that I'm not proud of, but yet Hashem has seen it in his mercy to forgive me and not only to forgive me but draw me near into his people and make me part of his people which to me it does something to my heart when it comes to Hashem and it also tells me a lot about Hashem because I felt the same way the same way that these brothers of mine were speaking about Hashem or their situation reminded me of me when of I, I believed that I, I didn't have redemption even though I heard and I would say that I had, you know, that there is redemption in Hashem and all that. But inside, in my mind, in my psyche, and in my heart, I knew how bad I was as a person that I just couldn't see myself, you know, being completely forgiven or being completely uh, close to Hashem or reaching a certain level of closeness mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, of spirituality. Let's right. say a racial of, of spirituality. And it just, it just did something to me. I, I just wanted to say this, and I, I'm, I'm going to read something from Tehillim that should remind everyone out there that if you are going through something hard and if you feel like you have no redemption or anything like that, just know that it is not true. Tehillim 32.1 says, How blessed is he who transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And then Meshle 28.13, he says, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. So there's something really powerful there. Confession to Hashem with a con contrite heart and a contrite spirit, right? Uh, will get Hashem's attention and he will forgive you. Now, there is a psychological part of it too that you need to believe that you've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. I know there is something in the heart that tries to keep you away from sinning again, which is why you feel bad sometimes, which is, that's a good thing. You feel some kind of remorse, mm -hmm. but being able to understand the forgiveness of Hashem and be able to move forward, uh, with proper actions is the healthier way. Mm -hmm. There's another part I wanted to read, which is Tehillim 103 verse seven through 14. And he says, he made known his ways to Moses, his actions to the children of Israel. Compassionate and gracious is Hashem, slow to anger and abundant of kindness. He would not quarrel for eternity, nor would he ever bear a grudge. He has not treated us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as high as heaven is above the earth, has this kindness overwhelmed those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, has he distanced our transgressions from us. As a father is merciful towards his children, so has Hashem shown mercy to those who fear him. For he knew our nature. He is mindful that we are dust. Listen to me, my Jewish brothers. Listen. And anyone else who this applies to. Hashem understands our shortcomings. He understands our limitations. And he's not expecting us to give more than what we can give. So if there's a point in time where you did not know better, or even if you knew better, but you were acting in a particular way for whatever reason, and you've come to the realization that Hashem is the one that you're supposed to follow, 
and you with all your heart ask Hashem for forgiveness directly to him, you go directly to him and you ask Hashem to forgive you, he will forgive you. You turn away from your sins. You turn away from, the, from your wicked ways and you go back to him. Does that mean that you're going to be perfect? No. All you need to do is one step at a time, you change one thing at a time and those things that, are, that you know that Hashem does not like, that you remove quickly and that you stop. But all the other little things that, that are kind of hard to, to maneuver through, little by little, one step at a time, get closer to Hashem, a mitzvah here and a mitzvah there, and it will get you where Hashem would be happy with you. And happy is not the right word. He will be pleased with you. And you will be pleased with yourself. I think it's very powerful. Yeah, those verses are great. And one thing about sin is it it completely directly um, attacks your worthiness. And, you know, it's almost set up like that on purpose so that, you know, we feel not worthy. Because if we, we didn't have that issue, um, it wouldn't be such a big deal if we sin. You know, like right. it, it's good in a way that it um, makes us feel like, I am so unworthy, like, because then you're acknowledging that if you're not worthy, that, that he is. So it's like, you know, it's set up for you to recognize who you are and how big and great he is. Amen. And, um, and not that we should wallow in unworthiness, but for us to, to know, you know, and also I think that, um, it's really hard to let go of the memory of things that you've done. So, you know, let's say you're not living in sin, but you have these memories that haunt you of things that you've asked forgiveness for, but they're still there and they're still fresh in your mind. And it happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, one year ago. Right. Um, it's hard to accept forgiveness when you are reminding yourself, you know, or you have that right. haunting you that, you know, look what you've done kind of a thing. But Hashem doesn't do that to us. Right. We do that to ourselves. Yeah, we do that to ourselves. I'm reading a book. The body not forgetting the things that it, it has gone through or that the body it does. never forgets. It never forgets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the point is that you are constantly reminding yourself. It's not Hashem necessarily that's reminding you, it's that your body uh, automatically is reminding itself of the things that it's done or that it wants to do because it remembers the feeling of those things that uh, of sin. Some sins just feel good, you know? And so the body wants that feeling back mm -hmm. and then it's up to us to rise above it uh, through connection with Hashem through prayer time through mitzvahs and one of the things that uh, I remember the rabbi was telling us that when we have a, a thought that is not good uh, just pick up any type of spiritual book mm -hmm. you know pick up a Torah Chumash or a prophet or the, a Gemara or anything like that and Great advice. Just, <laughs> yeah you just pick it up and then you start reading and what it does is it starts rewiring your mind into the way that Hashem thinks, the way that the sages think, and, and stuff like that. So it's a constant rewiring of the mind. Yeah, even as a non-Jew, that was always one of my remedies for anxiety or um, just racing thoughts or whatever was um, re rewiring the mind with what the Word of God says. It's powerful. His it Word is, powerful. is amazing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, was there anything else in the Torah portion that you were hitting on, or was this it? Well, the Torah portion is very vast, and there's a lot more, but I wanted to just kind of touch on this one particular part today yeah. uh, and not make the video very long. That was great. Um, thank you for sharing, and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.